Thanks, Adam. Those were the first words that erupted from my wife's mouth as the end credits rolled on Ken Russell's monotonous mindbender, 1980s Altered States. Honey, we can't blame Adam. He didn't make the movie, he just assigned it to me for a classic review, the theme being Transformers. We should have watched Transformers then. It sucks, but at least there's giant robots who turn into cars. My poor wife, look, it's my fault. If anyone is to blame, it's me. Every so often I ask my wife if she wants to join me in the viewing of any of the films we explore here on The Cutting Room. More often than not, she wisely avoids them, peeping Tom, but she was sincerely <laughs> curious about altered states. But boy, was she pissed. Do you know how precious my weekends are? We could have been watching so many other movies we want to see, like that HBO documentary about Frank Sinatra we've been trying to finish for eight weeks. Altered States? I'm sorry, honey, I'm sorry. I know you work hard, and that the last thing you want to do on a Saturday is spend it with Charles Hayde and Bob Balaban screaming at each other. Meanwhile, the whole time I'm imagining Adam just laughing smugly at this situation, as he is frequently apt to do. So here we go, counselor. Here's what I got out of Altered States, the film you assigned me. An arrogant asshole named Eddie Jessup, played by William Hurt in his screen debut, decides to take it up a notch by doing every hallucinogenic drug he can get his greedy, grabby little mitts on while floating around inside a sensory deprivation tank. Jessup's a member of the Dead Dads Club. He's fed up with his life and studies and soon comes to the conclusion that his scary smart mind is the oh-so-special one that deserves to be expanded and inevitably abused to its most stratospheric infinite realms. After he goes to Mex Mexico to drop ayahuasca, he comes back as an even bigger dick scores some other tank out of like the Craigslist of the time or something, and somehow some way turns into Chaka from Land of the Lost midway through the movie. But it's not even William Hurt as Chaka. It's some little dude Chaka. running around. Chaka! <laughs> it's some little dude running around, right, Tom? Anyway, the little dude runs around wreaking havoc, killing security guards and eating zoo animals. Now that's a Transformer. But of course, that's not enough for old Ed Jessup. Oh, no, no, no. Because the next thing you know, he wants to go even further beyond the beyond. But this time, he's now got a wife to worry about, and he keeps stressing out his battered, bearded buddies, Balaban and Hade. So by the third act, Jessup has morphed into a giant, blonde poop man who screams a lot and burns his wife. Uh, look, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you what the fuck this movie was trying to say about science and man and the dawn of man and mind expans expansion or whatever. It made no sense to me. At least with David Cronenberg's The Fly, I got what Jeff Goldblum was trying to do. He was trying to build a teleportation machine to make life easier easier for all of us. A fly got stuck in one of the pods during a test, merged DNA with Jeff, and well, I don't have to tell you how the fucking fly movie goes. My point is you felt for this gold bloom lunatic. He was a crazy scientist, sure, but you understood his purpose and you cried when he died. But William Hurt, I don't know. He just seemed like a selfish cock, hell bent on getting off on the greatest high, much to the expense of his loved ones, no less. And I don't really get how that became a physical transformative thing. It didn't help that Patty Chayefsky's script is so bloated with nonsensical conversations, weird monologues full of words like archetypically American, limbic, and laryngeal sack. And all the actors are eating food while talking or screaming over each other. Huh? What was that? What did he just say? Oh, big surprise. Patty took his damn name off this thing. Once he started fighting with director Ken Russell throughout the making of this monstrosity. Look, maybe I wasn't baked enough to truly appreciate what was happening in this movie or grasp its heady beyond my comprehension ideas. Sue me, I'm a wino, not a dope fiend. I wasn't on LSD when I watched it. I was on a 2013 Coppola's director's cut Pinot Noir. But I do love druggy trip-out movies, I do. Gilliam's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? It doesn't get any grander or more glorious than that. And I love Duke and Gonzo as people. But Altered States was just silly to me, and not fun silly, like stupid silly. And I don't think I have ever in my life witnessed a more abrupt, insipid ending than the one in Altered States. You're right, honey. I did go too far with this experience and these experiments. Thanks for showing me the road to sobriety. You're an asshole, William Hurt, and I'm sick of seeing you naked. And why didn't you play Chaka? And, and no doubt your character fell off the wagon a week later when he caught wind that crack cocaine was just around the corner. Anyway, thanks, Adam. <laughs> You're welcome.
<laughs> oh, oh my wow. god i don't think i you know i'm with max man i was so disconnected from this movie and max thank god he did turn into chaka because that was the only thing that was interesting that ever really? happened in this movie. yeah that and when bob balaban was putting his food away in the cabinets and making the sandwich that that was that was interesting too but that was pretty great but chaka was was the best. I mean, I I swear I'm like watching this film for an hour. Just I'm with you. I'm just like, what the fuck am I watching? What am I what am I listening to? What is with these people? You know, I'm so disconnected from all of them. And Chaka comes along and literally uh, makes things exciting for about ten minutes. So luckily we did have that. I just couldn't get into. Did you not see it when uh, it was? I out never saw it before. I've always had it on my radar. I've always wanted to see it. It's been referred to as a very important film. It's a druggy film too, Joe. And you know, I could I could get behind that. I you know, like Max said, you know, there are certain uh, films that are really well done, and I'm a big fan of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I think that's an awesome. I don't even have to be on drugs to enjoy Fear and Loathing uh, in Las Vegas. I think I might have had you know, I, I, I maybe if I took some shrooms or something, Joe, uh, I could have went somewhere with this movie, but clean and sober i just i i just couldn't get into it uh i mean it's just not for me i i couldn't i don't know Ugh. no thank you i mean i don't even know what to say. <laughs> no thank you yeah, no I, thank you Pass. i thought it was pretty neat i liked of it of course you did you're jeremy garcia yeah. <laughs> he likes everything max he likes everything he finds the good in every movie I you do not like it. Guys. yes Hear my uh, Juno rant on various other podcasts. <laughs> so you don't I like Juno? The... Oh, I I despise that movie. Give, but give me one other movie that you despise. Uh, one other movie I despise. Oh God, um, probably. Uh, let let's, let's 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 move the pace here, kid. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. There's another one. <laughs> Hate it. <laughs> Hopeful. Unwatchable. <laughs> now you didn't like it because they demystified Michael, right? Um, That's what Rob did in that film. That's the thing that bugged me, and I believe it bugged Adam. And we love yeah, Rob Zombie. It, it bugged me, but it also I thought all the characters were obnoxious. Like everybody was screaming every single second of yeah. that. Movie. Dirty white trash characters that Rob loves. Yeah. Not in Haddonfield. Not in Haddonfield. And and I, I do enjoy, yeah, I do enjoy some of his movies. Like Haunted World of El Super Beast, it was really dope. But like. That was his comic book thing. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. he made an animated movie. That's the one you picked. It, yeah, it's right. <laughs> With oh, Giamatti. Devil, Devil's Rejects is cool, too. That's a masterpiece, I think. And I, yeah, I think Adam is those films are really, really good. Thousand like corpses. Yeah. I mean, Jeremy, have you taken acid before? Is that why you like this movie? No, no. I I don't know. I thought it was. I thought it was pretty interesting. No, no. You 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 know didn't like take acid when you watched the film, or like have you taken acid though? I I, I can tell you exactly how I watched the film. I sat in my chair. I had a glass of water, and I sat back and enjoyed this bizarro uh, relic of. Right, what do you wear when you watch movies? Because Bill Chetty wears jorts. So what do you wear? I, I wear shorts and I wear my wolf shirts. shirts. Your fucking wolf shirt. What did I tell you about them wolf shirts? Listen, I, man, I, it's I, time to get you laid. You got to take those shirts off. Jeremy, I wore wolf shirts. Nobody it was. The, it was the 90s, though. It yeah, was the no. 90s. <laughs> what is a wolf Adam's shirt? Adam's not what? wearing a wolf shirt. He's just not wearing a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a shirt with a werewolf on it, and I have gotten. So it's like a painting of... of a wolf on a shirt, uh, like one of the like the Walmart prints yeah, with, yeah. the, with the picture of the wolf. You yeah. asked Max why didn't William Hurt play Chaka? I think Adam's shoulder was too busy playing it. <laughs> oh, boy, I nailed it. If you ask me, you did a great job. You were the uh, best thing in the movie. Uh, yeah, you were great, Adam. Thank you. Now, Jeremy, do you watch movies with your mommy? Because you live with your mom, but she doesn't drink, so you don't get to drink with your mom. No, I do, well, uh, I uh, I don't watch <laughs> movies. What? I don't watch movies with my mom. No, I, why not? Uh, we have pretty like different tastes and stuff. You don't have little date nights with mom. No, I'm not, not really. Oh, trying to get it on with your mother. I'm talking about 
Because, like, my mom and I used to love watching Scarface together and the Rocky movies. Like, those were our movies. And I got so excited. You know, Thanksgiving time, we'd always watch Rocky together. Every Thanksgiving, I used to watch Rocky with my mom. You don't have a movie with your mom that you like to watch with her? Um, well, I mean, we went and saw Halloween in the theater recently. Always and... about Halloween. It's always Halloween, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a big, like, Halloween month dork like i just love that time of year and we went to the we you know we saw like texas chainsaw in the theater we saw was uh, it a rival yeah yeah well uh the local drive-in had a marathon of the first two elm street movies Ooh, now you didn't nice. say it was drive-in you said drive-in. it was drive-in nice yeah work. yeah it was uh the <clears throat> first two elm streets uh texas chainsaw and creep show now do you sneak food into the drive-in like does mom have a little dinner and a little candle no, no. We, buy, we got brings like, a concession. dinner to the drive-in. Who would bring a dinner? What hey, are you man. talking about, Tom? I that's how you, how it's done. That's My wife and I, every time we go up to the Central Coast, snacks. there's we a bring... drive-in, and we stop at this awesome Mexican restaurant. We get a Mexican buffet spread, and we right. find our spot in the drive-in, and it's it's Mexican buffet in the car. The sunroof is open, double feature. Come on, yeah, see, it's maybe, glorious. Maybe when I went to a, the drive-in as a kid, it was like we were poor, so it was just like, hey, you, hey, fucko, you're just lucky to be here. You know, I <laughs> who said that to you? Your mom, your dad? Who, who, told, who talked to you that way, Tom? <laughs> Jesus, you know what? You know what? My listen. You know, my mom's boyfriend. He was such a dick. He would fuck with us. Like he'd be like, he. Ta- I remember one time they took us to see Tootsie, and he like he couldn't just look, like take us to the movies and let us enjoy it. Like he would tell us beforehand here, like before we'd go in, he'd be like, "We're not here to see the movie. I'm supposed to meet this guy in this brown jacket, and once he gets here, we're out of here." So you'd sit there like, you know, instead of enjoying the movie, you just worry about the moment that you were going to have to get dragged out of the movie. But it was all bullshit. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's some pretty powerful stuff. Yeah. <laughs> he was such a dickhead, man. Uh, Sounds like the Cosby show. So anyway, no, Adam, we didn't have any fucking fancy Mexican food at the drive. Fancy <laughs> Mexican food. <laughs> really I'm sure it's out of the so styrofoam big. box, yeah, right, Adam? This is from, you know, Tacos del Mexico. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like out of a styrofoam <laughs> box. <laughs> next next to the Chevron floor. station on we, the way we, to the drive-in, man. We had a full Thanksgiving turkey, and we had mashed potatoes, and... Uh, uh, are you doing stand-up comedy, or are you serious? He's doing a bit. He's doing... <laughs> I'm, 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 d- I'm doing sit-down comedy, because I'm sitting. <laughs> now, is that room clean? Did you you get those dust yeah. bunnies under the bed? Did you clean that? Yeah, I recently uh, cleaned my room uh, in a, a fit of inspiredness. Now, let me ask you. When I used to clean my room, I would I would close the door, and it was a big show. It was a presentation for my mom. Mom, come I, here. I'm ready. There's my clean room. Did you do that? I, I did, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so. And what'd she say? Did she give you a reward? Uh, she she said good good job, and good job. Uh, she, she was very she was very proud and happy. Hey, Jeremy, uh, listen. If we're gonna have you on, you're gonna at least have to sound like you're happy to be here. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I I, I uh. <laughs> otherwise, I, otherwise, I don't know what else to do, man. Hey, All right, now, man, now hold on. Now, Jeremy, let's take it back for a second. <laughs> you said you 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 liked altered states, right? We've got two like like people now that that really didn't like it. Max and Tom didn't like it. Uh, you said it was cool. Why did you think it was cool, man? Well, I I appreciate. Well, I thought it was interesting because I you know getting the sense of what was happening because these you know this is the kind of movie like uh it's it's you know it's very visual so I I was. I was taking. I was trying to think when I looked at the visuals of the film, like what they could probably be getting across. And what I, what I sort of think the movie is about is because uh, the William Hurt character is so kind of like detached from his loved ones and everything. Pretty much, he's so obsessed with making this giant scientific discovery because of his hubris and his sort of. I, I, I got the sense that when his because of the first hallucination sequence, you see him like throw down the Bible and you see this other sacrilegious imagery. I took that as like sort of he kind of renounced God after like his father died or something. So he he's kind of overcompensating 
from the other side with the science and he's so hell bent and it's kind of like the science is like his new sort of I, I guess God or religion or whatever. And he's so and he's kind of obsessed to the point where he's just completely detached from everybody and he learns through these bizarro things that happen to him over time that he you know what really matters is like kind of the moments day-to-day moments with his family and everything that's what i kind of got from the film uh it did i i it did it wasn't perfect don't get me wrong i mean like the whole ape sequence was utterly ridiculous and what I, I, that's it was the best re- part of the movie it's part by far it, it was it was great it was great it was entertaining. all right you tell me how he how did he turn into an ape how did he turn into chaka if this I, guy's I, doing drugs and he's trying to expand his mind to the infinite places how come he physically transformed into land of the lost guy you see, the, it, see that kind of stuff i i don't know i mean that could have been i don't know it's 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 one of those things where Chaka. it's one of those kind of relic <laughs> Relic did you weirdo probably movie. started eating the animals because I did. I got really mad. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. That that stuff was uh, kind of unsettling. But I, I was more I was more annoyed because I thought, oh, okay, this movie is going to be a monster goes around and picks people off movie. And I was like, I, I don't know. I was like, oh, I thought this movie was going to be more interesting than a like basically a slasher movie with this silly ape monster. Uh, that, but that sounds like a great that ape monster silly one more time yeah. and and not only that but uh, uh, that ape monster running around terrorizing for 90 minutes that's that's a good movie oh i mean i i, I disagree because that movie is called shockma and it's terrible <laughs> there's there's this like <laughs> jeremy movie. knows all of these funky movies i've never heard of it's like they already made that <laughs> yeah they did it's it's about a genetically altered baboon that kills people in the hospital <laughs> Good. I hope he kills a lot of people in the hospital. Who? Oh, yeah. The sick and dying. No, in this weird movie oh. Jeremy's talking about. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there was a lot of stuff. It was like, it reminded me of, like, like sort of Jodorowsky stuff where, I mean, I don't Come really on. know. No way. I, I don't know if it has any sort of answers, but it's... It's... Jeremy, let me ask you this. When you watch movies that were made in the past, this was made in 1980. When you look at a film that was made in 1980 and you're watching the actors on screen, do you say to yourself, man, it sucks they did not have crest white strips back then? Uh, I, that doesn't enter my mind, but it's, sometimes it does. Like, I can't watch Austin Powers because of his teeth. Yeah, but his teeth are fake. That's a goof. I'm talking about these people. Who are, like, William Hurt's teeth are yellow. I love William Hurt. I love him. Yeah. But his teeth are pretty yellow in this thing. I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I are you taking care of your teeth? <laughs> uh, Floss. You know, like, lately, I've been getting on that more. Like, do I, you mean lately? Do you floss? Yes. Okay. You could say no if you don't, Jeremy. Don't do it. Don't say yes to appease him. Oh no, no, I, I, I do. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Just making sure. I don't want him bullying you. How? Oh, no. You, I would never. I love this kid. How many times do you brush your choppers a day, Jeremy? Um, tw- it varies. Sometimes once, sometimes twice, sometimes three times. All right. Now, do you pick your teeth with dental picks when you get meat in there? Uh, no, I don't. Ha- I don't think I. I don't have a dental a dental picks. They got whatever. these great dental picks. They're really great. <laughs> Joe, okay. what is he doing? I'm right. I'm, I'm writing this down. <laughs> it, it sounds like the train has jumped the rail. Are you ready? <laughs> they're called, <laughs> you guys, they're called the doctor's brush picks. Go pick some up. I know them. They, I've got. Next, them. When like was the last the time? Triangular toothpick. When was the last time, if ever, you had a day where you only brushed your teeth once? <laughs> it might be a, a day I had the flu. Okay, so what happens? Have... It, it's happened once, twice. Once or twice. I try to brush my teeth once a day whether they need it or not. <laughs> oh, good boy. Good, Adam. That's a good Adam. All right, so we're, ta- we're talking about altered states. We haven't heard from Christiana yet, so I'm very interested to see what he has to say about altered states. Joe, have wow. you seen this before? 
<clears throat> you know, I've seen parts of it. I do remember seeing little clips of it when I was a kid, Yonder? and it did. It always interested me just because it was it was so shocking. Mm-hmm. The the imagery was really shocking. Right. Those hallucination stuff. But I did, if I did see it, it was probably only bits and pieces because I probably had no patience. It doesn't for sound all like the... you're too excited about it. Um, I enjoyed watching it just because it was like it it was like sort of cathartic in that you know, like I said, it's always been in my memory as little bits and bits and pieces but finally seeing it and finally understanding what it was about it was like oh okay it was kind of like a, a bucket list thing where you know it felt like i needed to check it out and see it um you know look i think that you max you hit the nail right on the head that uh the whole thing of him um physically transforming seems a bit like a contrivance you know i don't that it seems like an impossibility but again i thought that there were some uh yeah, and I got hooked on. I got I got snagged on that. It was distracting. I mean, you go in there and you have a you can have a spiritual trip out, hallucination or whatever, yeah. but you're not physically gonna re- emerge. Like to have an actual it. event. Yeah, I don't. Or was, there was that no a trip? Ex- was he on a trip and that didn't really happen? I well, no, it did happen. I mean, they, they, didn't they say like things were actually dead? Yeah, right. They, there was yeah, there were. People, and he there, woke there, up in the zoo. Doesn't mean that yeah. he turned into an ape. That's what true he, too. Wait. But there were oh, oh they took the X-ray and he had the ape uh, physi- physiology or whatever the anatomy or whatever and all that stuff. I think it was I think they he it was meant that he actually did transform, which was annoying, which was irritating and distract distracting yeah. because there was no explanation for it. Um, but that said, I do I do kind of dig the uh, the ideas that were I guess kind of going at it, and, and I sort of like the uh, I thought it was an interesting sort of abstract uh, bit of short film sequences with all those hallucinations that you don't really see. I mean, now it would be you know all a CGI hallucination like. Uh, what's his name did the pie guy did with that fountain movie, which oh, you yeah. know, right. you know what I mean? so, yeah. like I, I like that this guy was doing like symbolism and all that stuff. But I will not like Jeremy. Right? I, I it was going by too fast for me to even try to freaking pick apart the symbolism in it. Mm-hmm. But uh, Max, I had the same reaction. I sat down here. I sat down with my wife to watch it, uh-huh. and after like ten minutes, she got up. She's like, "All right, I'm out of here." <laughs> 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 it's like, it's like, a great no movie. Problem. I will, I would nice. definitely say that. It's definitely not a good date movie. I mark my words. If Adam watched it with his wife, she loved it. They watched it together. They had a great time. It was all no, amazing. You see, I didn't even ask her to join me to watch Altered States. <laughs> you didn't. The reason we have it's a high well, hit ratio. Is... She, just, she just joined you? No, she didn't see that one. Okay, all right. Fair enough. No, there, there's sometimes I will say, hey, I got to watch this for the show. You want to watch it? But like, I, I, the movies that I choose to put it out there for, I... I know, uh, you know, at least have an opportunity of being well received. That's good. See, <laughs> I get hurt when my wife, I, you know, here's a little bit of confession. But I get hurt when my wife won't sit down and watch old movies with me. <laughs> she, like, she, like, she'll like sometimes, oh, she'll, oh, she'll, it's like every once in a while we'll, we'll sit down and watch, you know, she can watch old movies. She likes foreign films, you know, especially new films. So she we watch all sorts of shit. But <laughs> like, this. like if I put on like something like uh, you know just some obscure old film, it's like very rare that my wife won't watch it, and then I'll be like, oh, you, this is re- these movies are really important to me. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, at least she, at least she has the choice, Joe. We don't have the choice. <laughs> I force yeah. them on you. Your wife can walk out of the room. I gotta, I gotta sit there. <laughs> 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 I thought it was in, this was interesting in that I sort of remember the 80s having that um this sort of echo of the 60s where there were like these hit, older hippies yep. sort of hanging around yeah, from the man. 60s and they weren't old you know yeah. so there was still like the these echoes of the spiritualism of, yeah and not only that Leary and all these uh all the, the merry pranksters and all these guys who were I love all that shit but messing around with hallucination yeah. and you know finding spirituality through And there was a big uh I mean the v- like Vietnam war movies too were real big in the set yeah, well, you got to think oh. in the like late '60s, early '70s, kids who you know, guys who were like in their early 20s, mid 20s, mm-hmm. they were in their they were like you know, four early 40s, and so it was like they were kind of still living that thing, you know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, I think that's what uh, I thought that was kind of neat because I, just just having a new perspective on it as being older and seeing that, and I think that you know 
I, you know, just coming from the town that I, we've, we've went over this a lot, being a, uh, having a heavy hippie influence in my town for some weird fucking reason. There was a lot of ass and a lot of people were tripping out and everything. So that makes no sense for North Jersey. It doesn't. I don't know what. It really makes uh, zero sense. (laughs) I know. It was a weird microcosm, but I do, but you, it doesn't sound like you guys have, uh, well, maybe Adam, but you guys don't have much experience or like with hallucinogens, or there, it was never a thing. What I mean, doesn't that come into play when you watch a movie like this? Well, yeah, I mean, Joe, I mean, you know, I've, you know, I mean, my first, you know, time I think I I took a hallucinogen was with you. Yeah, I know. And by that time, I had <laughs> done it like a hundred times. I was like twenty. I'm like, it's yeah. Awesome. I, it was like I was like your spirit guy. <laughs> like, I, I, you know what? I do remember standing in the living room. We were listening to uh, Jane's Addiction's Triple X live album, and uh, I think Fritz the Cat was like on TV, but like not <laughs> sound wasn't on. And Joe was like, ta- like Joe was talking to me, and he was like really like like dead serious about something. And he's got like Joe when he gets into it, like his right his right hand, like he'll start pointing at you, and like you know he does. <laughs> Does, like you know, he's like really getting his shoulders are like hunched over, and he's tell he's like telling me something. I forget what he was saying, but I remember looking down at him, and it was like he was like two feet tall, and I was like fifteen feet tall. And it was just like the weirdest thing I remember was uh, we were taking uh, mushrooms, I think. But uh, dude, I've taken uh, acid. Have you ever had a trip or an experience where it felt like you were getting, like yeah. you've totally yes. seen, like well, you've seen the world in a new way, yeah, like the, or, or yourself in a new way? Yeah, just, I took a liquid so. acid one time uh, where I literally lost like probably about three or four hours of time, like where it just, I sat down and it was like two or three o'clock in the morning. And the next thing I knew, it was like five or six in the morning. And I was like staring at something like across like this building from across the street and i just yeah. was like in my own head for well it's just like it it's that you just experience the world and like you have a completely different on the like it just feels weird like yeah. you feel like you've seen doom, it's so hard doom, to put your doom, finger doom, on you know doom, what i mean do Max, have you had that Max, do you have any uh, tripping experience? Listen, any experience I have with drugs has to do with a certain person we may or may not know. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> may or may not be on the... Uh, uh, may or may not, not present company possibly included. <laughs> you know, uh, really, seriously, that's it. And I think he is the only person, this person we speak of, on the planet that uh, I would allow to be around me while I did LSD because I want to have, it's so funny you just mentioned Fritz the Cat because I was going to bring up Robert Crumb and -hmm. I was going to bring up LSD. And actually, I thought a lot of the trip out scenes in Altered States were pretty cool, you know, even for the time. I love trip out sequences no matter what. And I really loved the sand thing. I thought that was just beautiful. I oh my it. god! Yes, yes, Max, you're right. You're right. Very on haunting straight. and very powerful. I and yes, watched that for ninety minutes. I would have thought that was a beautiful film. Yeah, and Ken Russell, come on, the dude's a visionary. Let's face it. I mean, he really is. I mean, I, I'm not a fan of this film, but I love Crimes of Passion. I think that is such a great film. Did you guys ever see that one? Dude, this guy is a guy who escaped me. I watched an interview with him, and he was talking about all these movies. I have no inkling of this guy's stuff. Yeah, man. I'm going to bring I, Crimes of Passion to the cutting room. I, I've heard of The Devils. I've never seen it. I know how controversial it was. I've read a lot of things about the censorship that movie uh, met because of like some of the like sack. He's had a, he's had a lot of trouble with yeah. censorship and like he's very controversial. And from what I was mm-hmm. hearing, Max, uh, the interview that I was listening to, I, I was like, oh, I gotta definitely look into this guy. So I'm looking forward to it. Listen, one of the best times I ever had in my life was with this guy we may or may not know, <laughs> and uh, there was mushrooms involved, but I don't think the dosage was proper. It didn't matter. It was just tripping out on a campsite that had no water. Uh, you know, you, you had to make do and, um, uh, it was the night, it was empty, there were fires. So like you couldn't have a fire either. And it was just two dudes getting their fucking drink on, eating these weird mushrooms. And I was drawing all this crazy crap and we were making videos and it was just seriously one of the best times of my life. Wow. That sounds very productive there, for being on. <laughs> there's a six part video, uh, series. Uh, <laughs> the, the yeah, document, this very, camping trip open that a production I studio. may or may not have been a part of. Yeah. That can be, that can be found on YouTube. On that YouTube. I, 
Highly yeah, recommend. Max and the counselor go camping. <laughs> Please, I think it's a classic. Please you know, watch them in order. Put that in this show. Put that like as the uh, shows right. you put. Sure. Seriously, there, that is the experience. But I believe, uh, I believe uh, you will. You guys will all enjoy taking the the time to watch the six part uh, <laughs> the six parts in order. I might watch it later. <laughs> I, I highly recommend it. But be under something or on something or whatever. Oh, but no, um, yeah, I I, I really want to do. It's so funny. I always think, gosh, I'm gonna do drugs when I'm old. I'm gonna be like Burroughs, you know, like when I'm 68. That's it. I'm going to do heroin. I'm going to do LSD. I'm going to, cause it won't fucking matter. I'll just be a rotting shit shell, you know, may as well go for it then. But right now I'm a little afraid, you know, I've, I've got, well, that's what I was going to say. You know, when you're younger, you're still malleable enough and you're still fearless enough that you can lose you. You're okay with just abandoning everything. You're, you're you comfortable with a lot of things, your physicality. Well, you're not you're not afraid to just let go. Sure, you, sure. You're not too. Yeah. You, you know that's what I. But listen, I mother. love, but I love tripping out, Joe. But I won't do it now because you know why? Because oh, I, because I, I, if I look in the mirror, I'm done. I'm <laughs> yeah, done. I'm true. done. I will just. I will fucking. Yeah, do you think your blackheads are coming out of your nose as a little black? No, it's just like you'll study yourself and like you know you'll think about and you'll just like the way you look physically. If if I'm if I did acid and I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm done. There's no way to reconcile the thing that you're feeling with the person outside of it because you like well, a lot of times exactly what's going on in this movie is that you you lose your sense of self, which is what the point is in a sense is to experience the world in a selfless way. I know that's all right, we're crossing into new territory here, but uh, when you see your reflection, it's like you're you're dis, you're uh, you're diminishing your ego, you know, when you're right. on a trip because you're you're letting loose of all the things that you. Right. For some reason, you you're not um, your barriers start going down. All your your convictions, you're starting to see the world in a different way, and then you see your reflection, and then you're like, oh, I can't be inside of that because that that no longer exists the way that I used to understand it. So it's a fright. It's a, like a frightening concept. Very, uh, oh, Joe, <laughs> tripping. <laughs> it's great. It's scary. <laughs> it's it. Adam, you play. Uh, you play. You may or may not be playing the part of a spirit guide in a pilot that may or may not be a film that you made. Oh my right? god, this is <laughs> correct. Perfect. <laughs> Yes, I was so mad at that beard that he has on because I thought, oh, my God, it's so wrong. It's so wrong. And it wound up looking really good. But but it, it was totally different color from the rest of his head and hair, you know, but they oh, I didn't fixed it. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't even pick up on it. So Adam, yes. you have plenty. Of, uh, you may or may not have plenty of experience. On, I don't even know. No, I don't. I don't have uh, I don't have plenty of, of experience. It's it's <laughs> I think. um but I've had enough. Yeah, I've had good experiences. Uh, but right. yeah, nothing uh, too serious or too crazy. But I have had a few of those experiences where uh, sort of <laughs> new ways to look at things have been opened up and sort of like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd call them life changing, but certainly perception changing. Uh, oh, my God. We were in Seattle. We were in Seattle. Uh -huh. And he's living up there with uh, my best friend from high school. But then those two became best friends. And then they became their little secret society best friends. And they would throw me a bone and have me come along now and again, though. So we're all up in Seattle. <laughs> I know this story. The X-Files, they're getting, they're like, like, they are getting to the center of the universe. We're going to find I out. Was, yeah, I was in deep. I was in deep. And then I went with them to the goddamn Seattle Food Festival, and they're both walking 15 fucking feet ahead of me. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck these assholes. I don't need to be here. And then they turn around. They're like, hey, man, you got to try bark. I'm like, what the fuck is bark? And it was like this bullshit. They, they said, this is the new high. This is the new way. This is going to put you on the plateau. And I'm like, what? So I, yep. there's 9,000 instructions. Well, first, you take a true story. And then you got to chew on the thing. And then you got to spit uh. it out. And you got to pick it back up off the ground and put it back in your mouth. And then you got to spit it out again. And then you have to stick your finger up your ass. And then you got to fuck a girl. And then, I like, I, I exhausted oh the end of Ark. Ark did nothing. It nothing. did Ark. It did Oh, I thought they were messing with you. They no, we were serious. They were on the bark zone. <laughs> Not me. 
<laughs> Adam, you should have gave him bad salts. <laughs> oh, man, this shit is all true. <laughs> Bark. <laughs> Guys, it was... can I get much ER with you? Jesus Christ. It was some kind of like organic <laughs> ecstasy or something, and you had to take like four pills on the and chew on bark and three drops in a in orange juice. I don't know. It was nuts. <laughs> it was nuts. Um, what was the question? Huh? What happened? <laughs> oh, altered states. I don't know. Tom, you can ask him uh, how he feels about this film. Who, Adam? Yeah. No, no, no. I, I hated this movie so much, I don't even want to... <laughs> I don't want to know anything he has to say about it. No, thanks. We'll move on. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, so who's doing Wings of Desire? Christiana? <laughs> Jesus, are you serious? Wait a minute. Can well, I ask Jeremy which brand of toothpaste he uses? Oh. You didn't get into the brand. No, we got to... Hold on. We got to find out that. I, I want to know what Adam. Is. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Adam, but I want to know: Are you a Colgate fella, Jeremy? Um, I use Sensodyne. The hell is that? You got sensitive teeth? Oh uh, yeah, they were. They were you got a sensitive. problem with your enamel? I think so, probably. Oh boy, he's a very sensitive little guy. <laughs> I have sensitive teeth on too. Facebook. I don't know what Jeremy's ever talking about. Oh, I'll just uh, like what? Bursts. What? What? Like you'll have a little just burst. Like you'll put out a sentence. I guess now is the time to die. And then in five minutes, <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> I'm watching Bicycle Thief, and now and now I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the two <laughs> movies he watches the most are Bicycle Thief and Halloween. And, and Jeremy, I, I hate cryptic. You're like, well, that's that. And it's like, well, honey, what what do you mean that's that? And I and I don't want to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, occasionally I'll just like just be like kind of stream of consciousness, like stuff that I just want to like. I don't know, like I because there's I, you know I'm living in this fucking like dead down. Right. It's nothing sorry. to do. Living in what? You and that Fred what? Armisen Max. bit of that stand-up comedian that never gets, uh, never finishes that thought. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, Adam, what, Max? When is the Jeremy impression? Oh, you know, like, you know, I just, it's, it's, you know, it's just this thing. Golly <laughs> gee, here, you know, my mom. I mean, she's. It's just I'm wolf shirts, and yet I don't know. I... <laughs> this is an honor, Jeremy. Yeah, it is. I... A rite of passage. Do you know who Max Cook is? Do you know what he's capable of doing? Um, in the channeling world. Yeah, he's he's a very good channeler. He's I, the I, best. He's I'm the a very right, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask Jeremy. Okay, Jeremy. Yes. Where do you get your? I, I'm asking. I'm asking Max. Where do you get your wolf shirts? <laughs> Max, listen to Joe. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to say, answer, Max. Well, I guess uh, the stores, the stores are there. There are stores I don't patronize. Uh, exhaustion, indifference, and yet. No, Jeremy, you do live. I mean, in Ohio, are you close to the stores? How do you how do you get to the store? Yeah, I mean, I'm close to the stores. I guess. But not that close. I don't want to be immersed in uh, consumerism. <laughs> do you go to the mall with your mom? I do. And this guy, I tell you, this guy came up to my mom. He looked down at her toes and he starts complimenting her toes. And I got really mad and I raised my fist, but nothing. Ah. <laughs> Oh my God! Remember that story, the, Jeremy? I do. I have the I have the biggest smile on my face right now. <laughs> I listened to you, and I remember your story about mom's toes. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was it was, it was yeah. weird and awkward. <laughs> wow. I'm yes. so glad we had Jeremy. I'm the one that said, "Hey, Tom, we're gonna have Jeremy on the last two shows, right?" Yeah, it's all you, Max. You're the guy that set this up. 
All right, let's talk about Adam's feelings about. <laughs> Yeah, real quick, Adam. What's going on over there? They want to hear what you what what you think about your movie here, Altered States. Well, listen, you know this was a movie I saw, like I said, on Select TV when I was like maybe eleven, around the time that I also discovered two thousand and one on Select TV. So you know it had a powerful and profound impact on me. Not that I got any of the symbolism or read too deep into it at that age. I was just purely blown away by the visuals. And um, I think in the past, like, 35 years, I've seen it once until recently when I watched it again. And uh, still, I mean, in context, visually, it's just such an interesting movie. Uh, it's Obviously, it's filled with flaws. I don't even mind the fact that somehow this guy physically transforms. I just, I just go with it. It's like, sure, all right, that happened. Somehow that happened. I'll just go with it. Uh, and um, yeah, just really, I thought, an interesting movie. I didn't. I mean, I'm not even looking too deep into the symbolism. I'm impressed, Jeremy, that you're able to pick some good. stuff out of there. Uh, but I know it's there. I know. But I just think it's a, a just a cool movie that for 1980 was exploring some things that um, I thought were probably pretty cutting edge in 1980 to be exploring both visually and cinematically, just story-wise, theme-wise. So I just think it's a cool film. It's not great, but it's pretty cool. That, Are you happy, it. Joe? Yeah, I I sort of feel the same. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know what? If if for nothing else, it definitely is going to put me on this Ken Russell guy because uh, yeah, you know, just those those hallucination sequences alone, I I gotta at least see some. And he was talking about all this weird shit about he filmed a scene in some other movie where nuns took Christ off the cross and raped them. Or That's the devil. Like that. Yeah. That's the movie. Yeah, that I don't know what really the fuck is going on with this guy. Yeah. I gotta. Yeah, the dude's I mean, made, made some maniac. interesting and controversial movies. Didn't he make? Yeah. Uh, didn't he make one of like uh, some rock band? Yeah, the Tommy. Like... Tommy. Yeah. Yeah, he made Tommy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> some rock band. Yeah, he just... got Zach Nicholson to sing. <laughs> <Some> rock band. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Some one of those rock and roll groups. How old are like... you, Jeremy? I forget. You're twenty four. I am. I am 21. I turned 22 oh in December. He's oh just a God. little shit. shit. Yeah, he's on with us 40. <laughs> what, are we, little what, tiny shit. what are we doing? What, Why yeah, what are, are you talking doing? to this little <laughs> shit? I <laughs> 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 the credit for it. 21. Tom, could you imagine when we were 21, like where we were at, if we were, like if Skype was around, <laughs> we, could you imagine us on Listen, on a freaking Skype with 40 year old people? Asked me to I'm old enough to be his grandfather. I would have told those guys, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, we would have been on there. It would have been like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we would have been doing all sorts of weird. You putting the microphone in the toilet and all that. When I try to, when I try to talk to people my age, they all all they want to talk about is Twenty Two Jump Street, and I'm just like, ah. Oh. Now that is a great film. I uh, haven't seen it, but it looked it, it didn't look that great to me. But I and those maybe. guys are transforming into different characters throughout the whole movie, are they not, Jeremy? Um, I, yes, yes, they yeah, are. So I, I saw, I saw lots of fake mustaches. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Are your fellow 21 year olds, do they give you any hope or do they say, wow, do you say to yourself, wow, these, these people are beneath me. It's all hopeless. I can't roll with these fuckers. Where's my mom? I mean, no, I mean, there's some, <laughs> there's, I, I, I never, I never look at someone like they're beneath me. Cause I'm, you know, I, you know, I, was in fucking like you know special ed classes i couldn't spell i couldn't do math like i i wasn't that smart so no i don't i don't look That's at people hated like, spelling and math i was yeah, in but, basic math jeremy i was with the mutants i, I was in AP english and i was in basic math i flunked math terribly yeah it was the max only, max and five chakas it was I me and not, five chakas and the only way i got out of that class was i the the teacher was so stupid i went up to him and i said hey listen can you give me an A instead of an F? Because I really want to uh, be in the play next semester. All right. And he gave me the A. He didn't care. That's crazy. Fuck math. You don't need a math. You got the calculator. <laughs> exactly. All right. All right I, I mean, I didn't I didn't get a math credit until... I've lost control, Joe. Until my senior year. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. Fine. Ask Jeremy to uh, transition. Us <laughs> I've lost control. <laughs> <laughs> Lost control again. Da, na, 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 na. All right. Uh, I'm all right with this because I'm I'm 
like dreading reading my review of Wings. Well, of we're going to go do it right <laughs> now. So here he is, Joe Cristiano, Wings of Desire. Here we go. 